Hey, my name is Milan, and in this video, I'm going to introduce you to Dapper, the distributed application runtime, and I'm going to show you how to build a simple microservices application using Dapper and .NET Aspire. But first, we have to answer what is Dapper. Dapper is a runtime that you can install on your machine and run next to your applications, which gives you the ability to build microservices applications that are completely decoupled from the underlying infrastructure. Everything your applications need to know about is Dapper and the APIs that it exposes, and you have the freedom to pick and choose which infrastructure components you want to run. Dapper has many built-in APIs, which are called building blocks, and the most common ones are the service invocation building block, the storage building block, messaging, workflows, job scheduling, but it also comes with built-in support for observability, security, and resilience. Dapper works using the sidecar pattern, where it runs as a container next to your application container. There are also some runtime components that you will need to run separately. Here you can see the base components represented by the scheduler, the placement container, a Redis instance, and a Zipkin instance for consuming distributed traces. Then we have our application container and the Dapper sidecar, which communicates with the respective components based on what the application is requesting. For example, we could use this to implement publish subscribe support, workflows, state management, fetch configuration values, or application secrets. So now that you have a high-level idea of what Dapper is, how do we actually run it inside of our system? Well, for this, you're going to need two things. The first one is installing the Dapper CLI on your local machine, and I'm going to leave a link to this documentation page in the description of this video, but essentially you're going to follow the instructions for your operating system. Here's what it looks like inside of Windows, and after you follow the initial steps, you'll end up installing the Dapper CLI. The next step is initializing the Dapper runtime. There is another documentation page for this, which I'm also going to leave in the description of this video, and essentially these steps are very similar. You'll follow the ones for your operating system and you only need to run one command which is dapper init and this is going to spin up some containers that are needed for dapper to function you can also verify your dapper version by executing this command and you'll see which cli version and which runtime version you currently have this is also going to spin up some containers that dapper is going to use and it's also going to initialize some configuration files that dapper uses to manage its components and now let's spend a moment to discuss what we're going to build in this video i want to have two simple services. Let me represent them using some squares. Let's say that this is one of our services. I'm going to call it the order service. Let's make this a bit larger so that it's easier to see. And then I want to have another service. I'll represent this with another box. And I'm going to call this the checkout service. And these are going to be two separate physical processes where we want to be able to implement communication between them to implement some functionality inside of our system. Without Dapper, we would have to take care of a couple of cross-cutting concerns. For example, we'd have to solve for service discovery. We'd also have to take care of health checks, observability, then we have distributed tracing, and I'm sure there are a couple more cross-cutting concerns that I'm leaving out. For example, one that I'm going to add to the list, which is important, is resilience. So without Dapper, we have to manage all of this ourselves. But with Dapper, we can introduce another component into our system. Let me add the containers that are going to represent my sidecar components. I'm going to add them next to the orders component, and let me add a nice Dapper icon to make it obvious what these containers represent. So now we can think of our two containers, the application container and the sidecar container, as one component inside of our system from a communication perspective. The two applications that we have, the orders application and the checkout application, don't need to know about each other. They just need to know about the sidecar, which they have available in their local system. So they're going to implement two-directional communication with the sidecar, let me add the proper arrows to make this obvious. And then when our services want to communicate, they're going to send a request to the sidecar, which is going to take care of forwarding this request to the sidecar of the other service and then consuming the response that the sidecar returns. So this is what I want to implement as part of this video, and I'm going to show you how to do this using .NET Aspire. So I'm going to start from an empty solution, and I want to add my first project. So I'm going to add a new project, and this is going to be an ASP.NET Core Web API. I'm going to call it the Dapper eShop Orders, and then let's go ahead and configure it. I'm just going to pick .NET 9 and configure it for HTTPS, and I want to enlist it in .NET Aspire orchestration. So let me create this project, and this is also going to scaffold my Aspire projects. 
the service defaults project and the app host. If I open up the app host for the Aspire project, you can see that Aspire is orchestrating our orders component. Now let's add another project. I'm going to say add new project. I'm again going to choose an ASP.NET Core web API and this one I'm going to call Dapper eShop Checkout. Let me click next. I want to use the same configuration and I want to enlist this in Aspire orchestration and you're going to see my new project showing up here. So now I'm going to clean up the program files of my two projects and all I want to have is just the base setup without any of the weather forecast boilerplate. Let me do the same in the orders component. So I'll get rid of this, the weather forecast stuff and the weather forecast type. And the next thing I want to do is to configure my Dapper sidecar. So I will go back to the Aspire app host and I want to install a NuGet package. I'm going to look for Aspire hosting Dapper. Now the most popular library is currently deprecated and it's been moved to the community toolkit Aspire hosting Dapper library. So I'm going to go ahead and install the latest version of this library and let me show you how easy it is to configure a Dapper sidecar. I'll take my orders project and I'm just going to say with Dapper sidecar. And this is going to configure a Dapper sidecar that's going to be running next to my application. Now I can also configure this resource by providing the Dapper sidecar options. And this gives you more options in terms of what you can configure on the sidecar. Now I'm not going to be dealing with any of this. I just want to set my application ID and this is going to be the logical name of how my application is going to be made available to the other applications using the Dapper runtime. So let's call this the orders API. And then let's add a sidecar next to the checkout components. I'm going to say with Dapper sidecar. And you can also just pass in the app ID directly without initializing the Dapper sidecar options. And let's call this the checkout API. So now let's go ahead and expose some functionality inside of our applications. Inside of the orders application, I'm going to add a local method. It's going to be called process order async. It's going to accept an order request. And this just contains some dummy fields representing an order identifier, a customer identifier, and the list of items that I want to process for a specific order. And then we're just going to expose a post endpoint with the route of process orders, accepting an order request, and it's just going to call our method, which is going to simulate some work, and we're going to return some response. It's not even going to be a structured response, I'm just going to return a string representing an order confirmation. And now I want to be able to call this endpoint from my checkout API using Dapper. So how do I achieve this? I need to install a NuGet package inside of my checkout API. So let's look for NuGet packages and I'm going to search for Dapper. And the library that I want to install is Dapper ASP.NET Core. I'm going to go ahead and install the latest version. And with the Dapper library installed, we have to configure some services. What Dapper gives you is a simple client abstraction that you can use for interacting with the respective Dapper components. So I'm going to say builder services add Dapper client. And now I want to expose an endpoint, which I can invoke by passing in an order request and it's going to forward this request to the orders API and process it. So let's expose this as a post endpoint. I'll say app map post. Let's say the route is create order. I'll make this an async request delegate. And what I want to have here is the order request as my first argument. And this is going to come from the request body. And then I need the Dapper client. This is going to be an abstraction from the Dapper library. So let me go ahead and reference the Dapper client. And if you take a look at the methods that are exposed on this client, you're going to find methods for interacting with the Dapper building blocks. I'm just going to focus on the service invocation building block as part of this video. And we're going to explore the other building blocks in some of my future videos. Now, if you want to learn more about Dapper, I recommend that you check out the article that's going to be in the pinned comment right below this video. Now going back to the endpoint that we are implementing, what I want to do is call invoke method async. Here I can specify what is my request type and also what is the result type that I expect to get back from this method invocation. Now this accepts a couple of arguments. The first one could be the HTTP method that we want to use for this request and this is going to be the request that the Dapper sidecar is going to forward to our application. The sidecars themselves communicate using gRPC. I can also omit the HTTP method and then it's going to default to post. So the next thing I need to specify is the application ID. This will be the orders API 
and this is the same name that we assigned to our application when configuring our dapper sidecar. So going back to our endpoint, the next thing I need is the method name. And we can translate this to the endpoint name that we want to call on our API. And this is process order, which matches the post endpoint that we exposed here. And then I need to pass in my payload and this completes my invocation call. So this gives me a way to call the orders API without having to know anything about where the orders API is located, without having to worry about tracing, and without having to think about resiliency and a couple of other cross-cutting concerns. So then I can just say return results okay, and I'm going to return whatever we get back from the invoke method async call. I'm going to open up the command line for a moment, and I want to just validate that I have Dapper installed locally. So you can see that the current CLI version I have is 1.15, and the runtime version is 1.15.1. Then the next thing I need to do is call Dapper init, and this is going to pull some container images from Docker Hub and install the latest runtime. Then it's going to spin up a couple of containers. You can see I have the Dapper placement container, the Redis container, the Zipkin container, and the scheduler container. So if I type in Docker PS, I should be able to see that my containers are running, but I can also show you the Docker desktop. And here you can see that my Dapper containers are up and running, so now I should be able to start my Aspire application and test out the behavior. This is going to spin up the Aspire dashboard, where you can see that we have four services or resources, the orders and checkout APIs. There is also our two sidecars running for the respective components. So we have the order sidecar and the checkout sidecar. Now if I jump back to Visual Studio and I'm going to open up the HTTP file for the checkout service, I prepared a request for the create order endpoint. So I'm going to send this request with some dummy data and we should hit the breakpoint that we have inside of our post endpoint. So then I'm going to go ahead and invoke the respective method on the orders API using the dapper client and we're going to land on the breakpoint inside of our orders API in the respective process order endpoint. So we're going to process this order and return back the response and we should go back to the checkout API where we can return the result to the caller. But notice that our request nicely flowed from the checkout component or the checkout API to the orders API and back. All the while, our two services don't know anything about each other and all the communication is done by the two sidecars. Now, if we open up our distributed traces, which you have available inside of the Aspire dashboard, let's take a look at this trace here for the create order endpoint. And here you can begin to understand how this communication looks like. So we have our initial post request to the create order endpoint. And the reason it's taking 40 seconds is because because we stopped on a couple of breakpoints. But after our post request, you can see that we have a request landing on the Dapper sidecar. If I open up the details for this span, you can see that there is a post request that we are forwarding to the respective sidecar of the orders API, which is available at this endpoint. So our two sidecars know about each other and they can communicate using HTTP. So then we're going to have a request landing on the order sidecar which you can see in this span here. And this is going to process the respective request and forward it to the post endpoint that we define in the order API. We're then going to process this request, return the response back to the orders sidecar, which is going to send the response back to the checkout sidecar, and finally return the response back to the checkout API. So you can see how easy it is to get started with Dapper and .NET Aspire. All we had to do is configure the Dapper sidecar, inside of our app host and install a simple NuGet package that exposes the Dapper client. And this is what allows you to interact with the Dapper building blocks. And in this case, we were using the service invocation component. You may have noticed that we had distributed tracing built in, which was available in the Aspire dashboard. And this is taken care of by the Dapper runtime. Now we are just scratching the surface here with this hello world example, and we have many more topics to cover, but I'm going to leave that for some future videos. If you enjoyed this video, then go ahead and click the like button that's going to be right below. And this will let me know that you want to see more Dapper content. If you want to learn more about distributed tracing, then you should go ahead and watch this video next. Thanks a lot for watching. Check out my courses to improve your skills. And until next time, stay awesome.